Welcome everyone to the first in a series of episodes on our FX Talk podcast entitled FX 101. These episodes will follow a slightly different format to our usual ones. Instead of an open discussion between the three of us, it will just be myself, a short monologue from me to you covering educational and informative content on a range of topics related to financial markets, FX, economics and more. We're going to start our FX 101 series of podcast episodes with episode number one, How Do Central Banks Impact the FX Market? To answer this, I'm going to cover what are central banks, what is their purpose, and most importantly for us at least, how does central bank decision making impact financial markets, in particular, of course, currencies. Let's start with the mandate of central banks. What is their purpose? Well, the typical focus of central banks is generally threefold. First of all, to ensure stable inflation around the target level. In the major nations, that tends to be 2%, but for emerging markets, this is typically higher. Secondly, to promote employment. And lastly, a mandate of higher importance for developing countries, at least, to ensure currency stability. But how do central banks achieve these goals? Well, they do this by setting monetary policy. The main tool at their disposal is, of course, setting the level of interest rates. Central banks are effectively banks for commercial banks. So when central banks raise their base rate, this is not directly passed on to consumers, but instead raises the interest rate available to commercial banks that hold money at the central bank in a similar fashion to how individuals earn interest on their savings accounts. This is then indirectly passed on to consumers by those commercial banks, thus spreading the change in central bank rates through the economy. But why do central banks change the level of interest rates? Well, they do this to achieve the mandates that I just mentioned, chief among which is ensuring price stability. Central banks view low and stable inflation as highly desirable, as this allows both individuals and households to plan their future savings and consumption, breeding confidence, and supporting economic expansion. During periods of high inflation and stronger growth, central banks will raise interest rates. This is typically in 25 basis point increments, although in extraordinary circumstances, such as a current global cost of living crisis, we'll see larger moves of 50, 75, 100, or even greater. How do high rates impact economies? Well, for starters, higher borrowing costs particularly higher mortgage rates, lead to lower disposable incomes for households and therefore lower spending. Higher interest rates also both discourage household borrowing while encouraging individuals to save and therefore spend less. For businesses, the increase in borrowing and investment costs further dampen economic activity, typically leading to fewer jobs and higher unemployment, which again, acts to weigh on consumer spending activity, lower growth, and reduce inflation. During periods of low and below target inflation and low growth, policymakers will instead cut interest rates, thus encouraging greater consumption, spurring growth, and raising prices back towards the central bank target level. The big challenge for central banks is that if they were to raise rates, too aggressively, that should bring down inflation, but it also could lead to contractions in GDP and possibly recessions. On the other hand, cutting rates too far could lead to an overheating in the economy, which may lead to an unsustainable and undesirable increase in domestic prices. What happens when interest rates reach zero? Well, this is a relatively new phenomenon that first arose following the global financial crisis in 0809 when central banks introduced what is known as quantitative easing. This is a process whereby central banks purchase government securities, typically bonds, raising the price of those bonds and thus lowering their interest rates. Quantitative tightening is precisely the opposite, whereby these central banks are now lowering their holdings of government bonds in a process referred to as balance sheet normalisation. Of course, this is a foreign exchange podcast, so what we really want to know is how do central bank rates impact currencies? 
Well, the rule of thumb is that an increase in central bank rates, known as policy tightening, is seen as bullish and should lead to an appreciation in the domestic currency. Whereas cuts to central bank interest rates, known as policy loosening, is seen as bearish and should lead to a depreciation in the domestic currency. Of course, it's not quite as clear cut as that because what investors are really interested in is a change in interest rate differentials for a particular currency pair. Let's take sterling against the US dollar as an example. When the Bank of England raises interest rates, that should lead to an appreciation in the pound against the dollar. Well, not necessarily, necessarily, as it also depends on what the Federal Reserve, the central bank in the US, is doing with its monetary policy. If the Fed is also raising rates and at an even faster pace than the Bank of England, then that would be seen as bearish for the pound against the dollar. The most important thing for markets as well is also not necessarily the actual change in rates themselves, but expectations for the change in future rates. So if the Bank of England is expected to raise rates in a month's time, the market will position itself for such an eventuality by pricing this in to the value of sterling, i.e. the pound will strengthen in anticipation of this rate hike and weaken in anticipation of a rate cut. So during central bank meetings, which among the majors typically take place every month or six weeks, markets are not just paying attention to the rate decision themselves, but also the bank's communications or forward guidance on future policy moves. When we refer to a hawkish set of communications, that refers to one's preference towards higher rates, whereas dovish refers to a preference for lower rates. Aside from merely setting interest rates, central banks have a number of other tools at their disposal. In many cases, most predominantly among emerging markets, these central banks will occasionally intervene in the currency market in order to influence the value of their currency's exchange rate. Every central bank holds what are known as foreign exchange reserves. These reserves, which typically consist largely but not entirely of the US dollar, are either purchased or sold by central banks in order to manipulate demand for the domestic currency. A depreciation in the value of the currency tends to push up domestic prices, so during periods of excessive currency weakness, a central bank may intervene by selling its foreign exchange reserves and buying the domestic currency, therefore propping it up and reversing some or all of the sell-off. In other cases, too strong of a currency is undesirable, as this could harm a country's export competitiveness. In this instance, the central bank may purchase additional foreign reserves, therefore selling its holdings of the domestic currency and leading to a depreciation in the exchange rate. In extreme cases, currencies are pegged to the value of another, usually the dollar or the euro. When this is the case, these central banks need to accumulate a sufficient amount of FX reserves in relation to the value of their imports in order to deter a speculative attack on the currency. They are also forced to follow the same monetary policy as the currency in which they are pegged to. So for instance, when the Federal Reserve hikes interest rates by 25 basis points, the central bank in, let's say, the UAE, who pegs their currency to the dollar, will have to follow suit with a 25 BP hike of their own. So hopefully you found this podcast episode useful and informative. We'll be producing similar educational content in the next few months, so be sure to look out for those. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to the podcast and read more of our updates on eBreeze blog.